Hey Calculating Cats, it's Miss Landis here. For today's video, we'll be working to finish 12-1, fractions and decimals. On the homework and practice page, we will be completing numbers 1 through 7 on page 631. Okay, so here is the homework and practice page for 12-1. Up here is some more useful information about how to look at the grids. And it explains how we get the decimal. So here we have 100 parts, 100 being our denominator, and there are 30 individual squares that are filled in, which gives us the fraction 30 over 100, and we can make that a decimal by having 0 0.30. And this place value chart that I made is helpful in explaining it. It's important to understand the place value of the numbers in how we get the decimal because we understand where to put the digits when we can look at a place value chart. So if you look at mine, maybe you can create a similar one at home to help you. So if we know that it is 30 out of 100, then our zero needs to be in the hundreds place and our three needs to be right here. And we would read that decimal 30 hundredths. In looking at the other example, here we have 10 parts, so that's how we get the denominator of 10, and there are three parts filled in. So this grid represents 3 tenths, and we would write the decimal almost the same way without the zero in the hundredths place, so then we would read it 3 tenths. And that's how it helps in relating the decimals to fractions to understand them a little bit better. So let's start with number one. The directions say for one through three, write a decimal and fraction for each grid. So number one, first we'll create our fraction and look at the parts. So the parts are either going to be 10 or 100. So here we have 10. So 10 is our denominator, and the parts that are filled in are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six parts filled in would represent 6 tenths. Now to write the decimal, I like using my place value chart to help me figure it out. I know that the fraction is 6 tenths, so my 6 needs to be in the tenths spot on the place value chart and we put a zero in the ones place because there are no ones. So my decimal is zero decimal point six. And that's how I create the decimal. Looking at number two, here we have one hole filled in and my parts are tenths again. So I do know I have one hole filled in so it's going to be a mixed number, one. And how many tenths do I have filled in over here? I have eight. So my fraction is eight tenths. So the mixed number is one and eight tenths equals. So this time, since we have a whole number, we can put a whole number in our place value chart in the ones place. And the amount of tenths that are filled in in the other grid is eight. So my decimal would be one decimal point eight. So 1.8 or one and eight tenths. So that is equal to one decimal point eight. Number three, now I have hundreds, uh, hundredths. So in looking at number three, I know my denominator is going to be 100. And it's kind of hard to see the parts that are filled in. You have to look a little bit closely. I'm not going to count each individual square. I'm going to count each row knowing that it's 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 full rows are filled in. And there's one little square down here. So our fraction is 71 one hundredths. And I'm going to use my chart. And I know that my last digit needs to end in the hundredths. So I'll write my 71, put a zero in my ones place. And our decimal is 0 decimal point 
So I will write 71 hundredths equals, there's 71 hundredths as a decimal. Moving on to four through seven, we need to shade the grid for each fraction and write the decimal. So I'm going to use a highlighter so that you can see it a little bit better. You can, if you have crayons or colored pencils, you can make them colorful if you want to. Now we have to be careful here with the denominator because all four that were given to us are hundredths grids and we only need to fill in one tenth here. One tenth would be one full row of 10. So we need to fill in just one strip of that, not just one individual square, that would be one one hundredth. We want one tenth, which is one strip and the decimal for one tenth would be zero point one. And I'll show that in the place value chart as well. And notice how we don't have anything in the hundredths because we're just showing one tenth. So there's one in our tenths. Moving on to number five, we have to fill in eight tenths. So that would be eight of the rows because we know that there's 10 in each row. So that would be one tenth. We need eight of them. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I have filled in eight tenths and I'm going to write it in my place value chart to get the decimal. I have eight in my tenths. So I'm going to write zero decimal point eight as my decimal answer. For number six and seven, now we have hundredths. So we have to pay attention to the individual squares that we're filling in. For number six, we need to have 29. So I'm going to do two rows to represent 20 and then three, six, nine. So now I have 29 colored in and my decimal point, I'm going to leave the zero here, 0 0.29. And finally, for number seven, we only have four one hundredths. And I'll show you on the place value chart a misconception or an error that somebody might make in a problem like this. So I'm only filling in four of those tiny squares. And this is what somebody might write on accident here. but that would be four tenths. We want four hundredths. So in order for your four to be in the hundredths, you need to have a zero here. It would be the same thing as saying you have four cents. You would represent that having the decimal point zero four. So we're going to write that as our answer. That would be how we write four hundredths. And that is all the work that we have to do today. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and I hope that you're staying safe and healthy. I miss you all and I will talk to you in the next video. Have an awesome day.